Hello friends and welcome back. If you're new here, hi, my name is Callie Bransfort and something that you might not know about me is that I used to be messy. Maybe not over the top called the producers of Hoarders Messy, but messy. And I spent a lot of time assuming that that was because there was just something wrong with me. I just maybe wasn't a naturally tidy person. I didn't have the time. I just couldn't keep up with it. And like so many other people, I spent a lot of time looking for some magic potion that I could take that would suddenly make me someone who kept my home looking like those sparkling clean ones that I saw online. But I finally learned that there wasn't some magic potion. There's no amount of label makers, clear plastic bins, and command hooks that are just going to magically turn a messy person into a tidy person. And what I finally realized was the real magic potion was letting go of the labels of clean and messy. Many of us think you're either tidy or disorganized. You're messy or you're clean, it's black and white. But the truth is, there's actually a lot of gray. Just because you're not picture perfect tidy doesn't necessarily mean the only other option is that you're some disorganized mess. Chasing after the perfectionism of being a clean person will lead most people to never succeed at being at any level of clean. Let me say that one one more time. Chasing after the perfectionism of being a clean person will lead most people to never succeed at being any level of clean. So in today's video, I wanna share with you some simple cleaning and tidying tricks I've been able to adopt in my life to keep my space more tidy, stay on top of cleaning in a way that's achievable for me, and realize I can still have a tidy space even if I'm not a naturally tidy person. <laughs> Tip number one, we already touched on this a little bit, but it's to understand there are levels of clean and tidy. Sure, some people are total hoarders. They don't even own a sponge. And some people's homes naturally do just look like the cover of Martha Stewart magazine all of the time. But the majority of us fall somewhere in between there. The goal is not to achieve perfection. Striving for perfection will lead most people to feel utterly defeated at the end when you realize, well, perfectionism isn't reality for most of us. Not to mention perfectionism is often the root of procrastination, as we assume if we can't get it perfect, it's not even worth trying to do it. You know the old saying, if you can't do it right, don't do it at all? That doesn't apply here. It is okay to kind of do this kind of all right or good enough. So, Cleanse your mind of the thoughts of perfectionism when it comes to tidying a space. Like take them out of your brain, throw them out the window, stomp on them, like burn some sage to clear your mind, girl, whatever you gotta do, cleanse it out. Okay, so if this were a sliding scale of cleanliness and say you are currently right here, then our goal is to scooch you on up to maybe here. And let me let you in on a little secret. Once you scooched up to here and you've been here for a little bit, we can then scooch you up a little bit more and then maybe down the road, we can scooch you up even a little bit more. And at the end, you might end up here. But if you had tried to just leap from here to here in a single bound, it's not going to happen. You are going to end up defeated and back where you started, Hello. right down here real fast. Okay, step number two is you gotta declutter your stuff. I know it's easier said than done. Stick with me here, okay? I have found more than anything else, clutter is the culprit of the majority of mess. Not only is it impossible to clean around clutter, but when clutter builds up on surfaces and drawers and closets, it is overwhelming. It'll stop you dead in your tracks because you walk into a space, all you see is the clutter and the mess, and you think, nope, don't have time for that right now, and then you just keep doing that day after day after day, ignoring it over and over again. Now, I have a handful of videos specifically about decluttering, including one that is 53 things you can probably get rid of right now that you won't miss at all, my closet decluttering guide, and my best secrets to decluttering. So I will link those down below. But what's most important is to know that when it comes to decluttering, you don't wanna to try to tackle it all at once. You may finish this video, hopefully, feeling kind of amped up and inspired to say, that's it, I'm ready to take control and get clean, and your first instinct might be to do a massive declutter of your entire house. Here's the thing, the mess in your house was not made in a day, and we are not going to rid of it in a day either. It's going to be a slow process of getting a little better day by day. Remember that sliding scale from earlier in this video? My best decluttering tip is to tackle one small thing at a time. Don't declutter your entire kitchen. Choose just the cutlery drawer or the Tupperware cabinet. If you need to do the basement, break it into smaller sections. The Christmas stuff one day, the old clothes you don't wear the next day. If you're a list maker, feel free to write down everything you want to declutter and be specific as you want, because I personally find that the process of writing things down can be really therapeutic. It allows it to get out of our head and onto paper. But then once it's on a list, pin it up somewhere and work on tackling a few things a week. Or if you're feeling really ambitious, do one little thing each day. By decluttering a little bit each day instead of one massive swoop, you're actually developing a habit of decluttering. 
Our bodies naturally create habits. I'm sure every night before bed, you brush your teeth without even thinking about it. Your body just like kind of autopilots to the bathroom, right? So if you work on decluttering one thing each day, it starts to become a habit too. And you start to realize the less you have, the easier it is for you to keep things tidy. So developing the habit of decluttering is a big help to naturally keeping things tidy in your home. All right, my next tip, I've talked about this before, but I'm gonna give you a few variations in this video. Something I have preached in many videos is my 15 minute cleanup. You guys have heard me talk about it like a hundred million thousand times, but the cliff notes, if you're new here, is I typically find most of us can find 15 minutes somewhere in our day. Most of us, this happens somewhere at the end of the day, we're exhausted, ready to sink down into the sofa, binge a few episodes of The Office before bed, but you can usually spare 15 minutes before that. So you set a 15 minute alarm on your phone and you just clean as much as you can in that 15 minutes. Added perk, put on some good jams while you do it. Trust me, it helps. <laughs> What I'll tell you is 15 minutes does not feel like a lot of time. So no matter how tired I am or busy I am, I usually find that I can give up 15 minutes. And you are going to be amazed at what you can accomplish and clean in 15 minutes. I can usually get the majority of my downstairs totally tidied up or the entire kitchen clean. It's just a little 15 minute chunk of time and it is a big game changer to the overall tidiness of my home. Now, for a little variation on this, I also want to introduce you to the three minute clean. Well, 15 minutes is a very short period of time. We don't always have a 15 full minutes in the middle of our day. We're juggling, getting ready for work, taking care of babies, all sorts of other things throughout the day. We legitimately might not have 15 free minutes during the day and I get that. And that's where the three minute clean comes in. It is great for little breaks throughout the day. I think all of us can find pockets of three minutes. So once again, you set a three minute alarm, you just power through whatever you can do in that period. And just like how you'll be surprised at what you can do in 15 minutes, you are going to be amazed at what you can accomplish in three minutes. Here's a list of some things I've done in three minute cleanups recently. Put away all my kids' toys, organized my cutlery drawer, mopped my floors, cleared and wiped down the kitchen sink, cleaned both my toilets, wiped the kitchen counters and appliances. You get the point. Basically, the reason these three and 15 minute cleans work when it comes to taking care of chores around the house is so many of us think we don't have time. Again, going back to the age old perfectionism issue, we think if we can't do it right, why not do it at all? But that just doesn't apply to tidying your home. Any little bit matters. By swapping out your narrative from I don't have time to I have three minutes, you can really start to transform your thinking about tidying your space and you'll start to be very surprised at what you can accomplish when you give yourself little tiny pockets of uninterrupted time. All right, my next tip is you need to identify your home's clutter spots. These are the spots in your home that are most susceptible to mess and clutter. Some common ones are things like kitchen counters, dining room tables, dressers, coffee tables. In general, most flat surfaces in our home are ripe for becoming these because, well, they're just perfect for putting things down on. But a general rule is to understand with clutter is that clutter attracts more clutter. We've seen it happen. You're tidying your home. You have one little random pile of miscellaneous things in the kitchen. You're tidying in the living room. Now you have a few more random things. You naturally add it to the other random things. And this little spot just kind of grows and grows and grows. Now the problem with these clutter spots is they make our home look way messier than they actually are and they lead to overwhelm and more clutter. And like I said, that feeling of perfectionism, if, if I can't get it totally tidy, I'm not even going to attempt it. So we see these clutter spots and we're like, I just can't even do it today. So look around your house and identify your biggest clutter spots. You're looking for maybe two to five spots. If you have more, start by picking the biggest culprits. All right, the next tip is that you are going to need to give everything in your home a place that it belongs. If it doesn't have a place that it belongs, it is ultimately going to end up in one of those clutter spots that we just talked about because you don't know what to do with it. When things in our home don't have a place that they belong, they just end up anywhere on the floor, any flat surface, not to mention it takes five times as long to clean because you're not just tidying and putting things away, but you're spending a bunch of time trying to figure out what to do with these things when you're tidying because you don't know where they go. When things have a home, cleaning and tidying speeds up exponentially. There's sunscreen out of the counter. You know exactly where the sunscreen goes. You found some papers that need to be attended to. You have a place where paperwork goes. You pick up your computer charger and you have a place where your computer charger goes. Like all things in this video, this isn't something you're gonna tackle overnight. There's no magic wand that you're gonna wave and give everything a spot in your home. You just need to take it little by little. As you're tidying and you end up with something in your hand that doesn't have a home, take a moment to designate a place for that item. 
Then next time you're cleaning, you'll know exactly where it goes. Okay, my next trick is you need to have a few systems and routines in place to help you control the flow of new stuff into your home. We already talked about decluttering. Obviously this is key, but so many of us think of decluttering as this big one-time task. Like on the show Hoarders when they take everything out of the house and they put it on the front lawn. But the truth is real decluttering for most people is really just about tiny little routines every day, not some big huge task once a month or once a year. Clutter sneaks into our home in all sorts of ways. We get new mail, packages arrive from online shopping, there's a little pile of things we left out from like a home project we're working on, kids' toys are scattered around, laundry doesn't make it into the closet, you leave something out because you need to take it to a friend's house. Whatever the case, we end up with pockets of clutter. These are those clutter spots that we just talked about. Now, once you have your clutter spots defined, you can just make sure to address them daily or weekly. You know where they are, you know you need to take care of them. But it's also a good idea to try to use some routines and systems to prevent these spot spots from getting out of control or even becoming clutter spots in the first place. I read an article one time where they interviewed a psychology researcher who specialized in motivation and habit formation. And she said, try using if-then statements, that they could be very helpful when it came specifically to creating cleaning triggers. So let me give you an example that I use in my own home. With two kids and two adults that work from home full time, we get a fair amount of packages. And thus packages and packing stuff can easily clutter up our space. So I created an if-then statement of if I open a box, then I will put away its contents and break it down. I tied the act of opening a box with the act of emptying it, putting it away, and breaking down the box. So they are one full action. It's never just open the box and take the stuff out and leave the rest. I find that these if-then statements work best when you pair them with a habit or routine that you already have. So just saying, if I see clutter, I'll put it away is too broad. It's not a real trigger. There's no action connected to it. It's never really going to work. A better example might be, when I'm brushing my teeth, that's the habit that you already have, if I see extra bottles on the counter, I'll put them away in the cabinet. Or when I'm getting gas, the routine. If there's trash in the cup holder, I'll empty it. Or if I leave my office to get lunch, I'll bring down any cups or plates on my desk. The key is pairing new habits with current routines. So start with just a few for some of the biggest issues in your home. Like I said, for me, it was packages and the contents of those packages. Maybe for you, it's kid toys or laundry. Start with a few of the biggest ones and try to create some little systems or routines to solve those problems. One final tip I love is to start doing one thing before bed each night that helps you with your cleaning aspirations for the next day. So personally, I always clean my kitchen sink. It's something I do every single night because coming downstairs in the morning to a dirty kitchen sink sucks. Maybe you decide you're gonna put away laundry. Maybe you're gonna wipe down your bathroom counter. Maybe it's emptied the dishwasher. Maybe it's clear off your nightstand. This doesn't need to be something big or monumental. It can just be 60 seconds. But just each night before bed, think of one thing you can do that's going to keep your space cleaner. I truly think the reason that so many people who are messy fail to learn how to be tidy is because they're attempting to adopt habits and tips from people who are naturally clean. The systems that someone who is naturally clean might use likely won't work for many messy people. Again, I don't really like the label of messy, but you know what I mean. It's a sliding scale. The real trick is not focusing on perfection and instead just focusing on doing a little better than you had done the day before. It's about looking at your own home and the clutter spots and the struggles inside of it and creating systems and routines that work for you and your life. For me, I didn't get tidy overnight. And honestly, I'm still not the world's tidiest person by any means, not even close. But over a period of a few years, I've learned these tips and tricks that have helped me to be a much more tidy person and keep a more tidy space with a lot less stress, worry, and clutter. And I hope that you can take away at least one of these points to use in your own home. As always, I wanna thank you so much for stopping by and watching. I hope you are having a fantastic day and I will see you all in my next video.